Okay, now to get down to the heart of the specification development phase, actually writing those specifications. All the activities that we've done up to this point are to help you understand your project well enough to write good specifications. So now go back to your user need list. Each of your user needs may have multiple specifications for them, but your specifications should really take those user needs and make them quantitative. So your user needs should be those sort of broad functions of your project, and they may even be self-contradictory. So user needs may say something like, it should be low cost and high performance, and these can contradict each other. When you get into specifications, they really should be comprehensive, they should be non-contradictory, so there should be a solution that has high enough performance and low enough cost. So you should always be able to consider in your specification phase a space in those in those specifications that could actually meet every requirement for your project, okay? Um, and they should be specific to your use environment. So we went through and thought about the context and the users, all of the stakeholders. So this is the point where you combine all that information and create a really good spec list. It's also important at this point in the project that you start to think about what are the pass-fail criteria for each of your specifications. So if you have good quantitative specifications, this should be pretty straightforward. So if your specification says the project should be less than 50 pounds, you should be able to weigh it and see if it's 50 pounds. But now is the time to think about those tests. How do you go about determining if you've satisfied each of the needs? So let's take a look at our Voss example. Here's the list of specifications that they created. Maybe a little bit hard to read in the screen, um, but they did a great job thinking through their location, appearance, education, model sizes, model heights as their user needs and then getting into really specific specifications. The model should be less than so many feet by so many feet in, in, in footprint. It should be unique and there shouldn't be other projects that look exactly like it. The height should not exceed some specific number. Now this list was really early on in their project and what I really like is that they went through and thought about what all of those criteria might be and put blanks in for the ones that they didn't have answers to. And that's a great way to think through your project and to really understand what is needed. As you get further into a project, I like to use a format like this. Now again, it may be hard to read in your slide, but what we have is a column of user needs that are numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. And each of those have specifications numbered 1.1, 1.2, and so forth, so that you can say these specifications are a subset of these big user needs. So my example here was a kite. I said my user need should be the kite should fly. That's one of the primary functions or attributes of the kite. And then for my specifications, I said, well, it needs to be lightweight in order to fly. It needs to be able to have a good sized surface area. And I gave specific quantifiable numbers to each of those. I then thought about what are the design outputs or the pieces of design that were going to satisfy those needs. So is it the physical um, weight of the design. Is it going to come from a CAD model or from some other output? I then think about the verification and validation for each of those. We'll go into those at a later time, but what's important to know now is that you will need to test each of your specifications and each of your user needs at the end of your project, and it's good to think through in the beginning while you're creating those user needs and specifications what kind of tests you might need to run at the end to make sure that you've satisfied them all. If you need help with this, feel free to see me or any of the EPIC staff for some help in how to create a specification table. So to recap, the specifications are the basis for all the design activity and testing throughout your project. As you go on in your project, everything is going to tie back to the specifications. So it's important that you put in the time and effort up front to create really solid specifications for your project. The specifications should be objective criteria, means you should be able to definitively say yes or no, they're satisfied and all of your solutions or any solutions you propose will need to satisfy those specifications. And recording your specifications in a really nice table is a good way to communicate them to the future semesters so that work doesn't have to be repeated or so that people can understand exactly why you made the decisions that you did. So one last time, it's your turn. Go ahead and create a numbered list of specifications from your project. I really recommend you start with your user needs list and build them from there. Then compare your list against what's in your team's design documentation, and as usual, try and figure out if there's anything that were left out and go ahead and make those updates now.